Hi, kindergarten friends. Time for the second part of this chapter, A Fair Breeze. When we last stopped off, um, Stuart had just gotten off the bus at the park, okay? When the bus stopped at 72nd Street, Stuart jumped out and hurried across to the sailboat pond in Central Park. Over the pond, the west wind blew, and into the teeth of the west wind sailed the sloops and the schooners their rails well down, their wet decks gleaming. The owners, boys and grown men, raced around the cement shores hoping to arrive at the other side in time to keep the boats from bumping. Some of the toy boats were not as small as you might think, for when you got close to them, you found that their main staft was taller than a man's head, and they were beautifully made with everything ship shape and ready for sea. To Stuart, they seemed enormous and he hoped he would be able to get aboard one of them and sail away to the far corners of the pond. He was an adventurous little fellow and loved the feel of the breeze in his face and the cry of the gulls overhead and the heave of the great swell under him. As he sat cross-legged on the walls that surround the pond, gazing out at the ships through his spyglass, Stuart noticed one boat that seemed to him finer and prouder than any other. Her name was Wasp. She was a big black schooner flying the American flag. She had a clipper bow and on her foreneck was mounted a three inch cannon. She's the ship for me, thought Stuart. And the next time she sailed in, he ran over to where she was being turned around. Excuse me, sir, said Stuart to the man who was turning her, but are you the owner of the schooner Wasp? I am, replied the man, surprised to be addressed by a mouse in a sailor suit. I'm looking for a berth in a good ship, continued Stuart, and I thought perhaps you might sign me on. I'm strong and I'm quick. Are you sober? Asked the owner of the wasp. I do my work, said Stuart crisply. The man looked sharply at him. He couldn't help admiring the trim appearance and bold manner of this diminutive seafaring character. Diminutive means small. Well, he said at length, pointing the prow of the wasp out toward the center of the pond, I'll tell you what I'll do. You see that big racing sloop out there? I do, said Stuart. That's the Lillian B. Womrath, said the man, and I hate her with all my heart. Then so do I, cried Stuart loyally. I hate her because she is always bumping into my boat, continued the man and because her owner is a lazy boy who doesn't understand sailing and who hardly knows a squall from a squib. Or a jib from a jibe, cried Stuart. Or a luff from a leech, bellowed the man. Or a deck from a dock, screamed Stuart. Or a mast from a mist, yelled the man. But hold on now, no more of this. I'll tell you what we'll do. The Lillian B. Womrath has always been able to beat the wasp sailing but I believe that if my schooner were properly handled, it would be a different story. Nobody knows how I suffer, standing here on shore, helpless, watching the wasp blunder along when all she needs is a steady hand at the helm. So my young friend, I will let you sail the wasp across the pond and back. And if you can beat that detestable sloop, I'll give you a regular job. Aye, aye, sir, said Stuart, swinging himself aboard the schooner and taking his place at the wheel, ready about. One moment, said the man. Do you mind telling me how you propose to beat the other boat? I intend to crack on more sail, said Stuart. Not in my boat, thank you, replied the man quickly. I don't want you capsizing in a squall. Well then, said Stuart, I'll catch the sloop broad on and rake her with fire from my forward gun. Foul means, said the man. I want this to be a boat race, not a naval engagement. Well then, said Stuart cheerfully, I will sail the wasp straight and true and let the William B. Wom Lillian B. Womrath go yawning all over the pond. Bravo, cried the man, and good luck go with you. And so saying, he let go of the wasp's prow. A, a puff of air bellied out the schooner's head sails, and she paid off and Fell, filled away on the port tack, heeling gracefully over to the breeze while Stuart twirled her wheel and braced himself against a deck cleat. By the by, yelled the man, you haven't told me your name. 
Name is Stuart Little, called Stuart at the top of his lungs. I'm the second son of Frederick C. Little of this city. Bon voyage, Stuart, hollered his friend. Take care of yourself and bring the wasp home safe. That I will, shouted Stuart. And he was so proud and happy, he let go of the wheel for a second and did a little dance on the sloping deck, never noticing how narrowly he escaped hitting a tramp steamer that was drifting in his path with her engines disabled and her deck awash. Now that was the end of chapter six. When we read chapter seven, it's called the sailboat race. And we can see if Stuart is really able to get that sailboat, the wasp, to beat the Lillian B. Womrath in a race. Bye.